Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, depending on when you are watching this video. My name is Dr. Maria Krenok, and this is session six of Keys That Unlock Healing. Uh, so if you have not watched the one through five teachings, I want to strongly recommend that you stop now and go back and watch those. We're going to put those uh, links to all those teachings uh, in the description of this video on YouTube. So if you need to find those, you can easily click on those to get those teachings. They are free. Hallelujah. Uh, but we have been ministering strongly on the power of our words and the miracle is in your mouth. Uh, today, I just feel like I wanted to take a little bit of a different direction and bring some understanding in some areas concerning the cross. Hallelujah. So let's start with uh, 1 Peter chapter 2 um, in a very familiar uh, verse 24. It says, Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. And notice the word were. In other words, it's past tense. So you were healed. It was done 2,000 years ago on the cross. But what I wanted to point out in this scripture um, is the fact that not only did Jesus die for our sins in this one scripture, but he also healed our bodies. And so we need to understand that Jesus died equally for our sins as he did our body and we can also confirm that in Isaiah right Isaiah says the same thing um, a little bit differently but let's just look at it really quick um, let me get there uh, here we go um, so Isaiah 53 again another very familiar portion of scripture Surely he has borne our griefs, okay? And the word griefs does not mean sad, but it means sickness. So surely he has borne our sickness and carried our sorrows. And that word sorrows means pain. Yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, okay? And he was bruised for our iniquities, which means moral weaknesses, right? Transgressions is sin, right? And then it goes on, and by his stripes, we are healed. Or by his wounds, we are healed. I want you to notice that Isaiah the prophet, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, we know that all scripture has been written under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that the first thing that he mentions on the cross is surely he has borne our sicknesses, all right, and carried our sorrows, which means pain when you study that out. It doesn't just mean physical pain. It means mental and physical pain. That is the first thing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that I, Prophet Isaiah uh, uh, writes. He could have wrote first, but he was wounded for our sins, right? Our transgressions, right? Or And our, our iniquities. But now he, he addresses, guys, the sickness and the diseases and the physical and the mental pain first. So these things have been paid for, man. And so, um, and then he goes down and by his stripes we are healed. My point is, this is the event of the cross. Jesus died equally for our sins as he did for healing for our bodies. Amen. So what do we mean when it's all paid for? Right. And, and so it's like going to the store. Okay. And, and we um, go to the store and let's just say this store, somebody decided to pay for everything in the store for you. And they say, go to the store and get what you need. All right. So you go to the store, you go to Walmart or wherever, and you go to the hygiene section and you go to the soaps and you get all the cleaning stuff, right? And you, you, you uh, leave the store without going to the pharmacy 
for the healing stuff. In the same store is things for cleaning your body as well as healing for your body. So it's all been paid for. So don't miss the God pharmacy, the God medicine. God's word is like good medicine. Hallelujah. And, and so, you know, we need to, it's free, right? And so you get up to the cash register, but you don't give them cash because it's all been paid for, right? So instead, what do you exchange for this free stuff that God has for us? Faith, <laughs> believing right, right? So we must believe right in order to live right. We, we addressed that in some of our earlier videos because if, if we believe wrong, we will live wrong. So the truth is that Jesus died equally for our sins as he did our bodies. So when we give our heart to the Lord and we say, Lord, forgive me all my sin. Lord, I acknowledge that you died on that cross for me. I believe that you rose again and that you're alive today and that your blood was shed for me. There is an immediate, and we pray that prayer and we mean it in our heart, honestly, there's an explosion that happens in us. Our spirit becomes completely brand new and it's not hard. It is not hard to give your life to the Lord. It's easy. And all of a sudden there's a transformation. Yet we make healing so hard. We must receive Jesus as our healer as much as we receive him as Lord of our life to forgive us of our sins. So the cross is not just about forgiveness of sins and eternal life. The cross is for healing for our bodies. And yet, when we, uh, when we mess up, right, as Christians, we ask the Lord to forgive us and we know that we're still saved, right? And yet... We don't question if we're saved or not, but we question, right, the same event that, that cleansed us, that made us brand new in our spirit, man, is the same event that healed our body, yet we question if we are healed or not. But, but we don't question if we are saved or not. You are healed. Jesus Christ pronounced healing over your life through the cross. Hallelujah. But we must line up and agree to that word and we must believe it with the heart. One believes unto righteousness, right? And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And right, it, salvation it is the cross healed in your body. So with the mouth, confession is made unto your miracle. But we must believe right. When we believe right, we will live right. When we believe wrong, we will live wrong. We must believe what the cross has done for us. Hallelujah. We must break agreement with any lies that are not the truth. All right. And so, um, let me, I want to address today, um, the importance of believing in righteousness, in who God has made you to be. I want to express again that the event of the cross was just as much for the healing of your body as for your spirit to be completely like Christ. Because when we were born again, our spirit became completely brand new. If anyone be in Christ, he is a new creation. Some translations say new species. God completely radically changed you. Hallelujah. But something happened in our bodies too. But we need to step up and believe that. Amen. And so without faith, it's impossible to please God. And so our faith is the currency of heaven. So when you go to that store that we talked about that has everything in it that you need, Jesus Christ is the store. <laughs> the Bible says all things consist in Christ. All right. So everything that you need is in Christ. So we can go to the store and receive anything that we need concerning pro the promises of God in the word for us, especially 
healing belongs to the believer, right? So our faith is the currency of heaven, all right? And so when we go to the store to get healing, <laughs> we exchange our faith, right? It is the currency, right, for our healing. And so we stand on the word of God and we believe in the word of God and believe means to commit. So we must commit to the work done on the cross that it is the truth. All right. And all of a sudden this verse is coming to me in Proverbs, uh, Proverbs three. This is not where I was going today, but uh, let's get there. Proverbs 3, Proverbs, Proverbs, Proverbs. There it is. I love Proverbs. Uh, it's one of my, I think one of my favorite, well, oh, I love them all, but it's one of my favorite books. Proverbs 3. Okay. Uh, and we've been talking on meditation, right? Meditating on the word. I'm going to start with verse 1. It says, my son, do not forget my law. We're talking about God's word. Don't forget his word but let your heart keep my commands for length of days and long life and peace they will add to you this is what we've been saying <laughs> okay we, we we started with meditation joshua 1 8 that uh, as we meditate day and night on the word of god the this is what the word says that it says that then you will have good success and then you'll have prosperity all right. In other words, then the word will manifest for you. Okay. And then we talked about Proverbs four about, uh, let your eyes not depart from the word of God and, and incline your ears again, meditation, meditating on the word, keeping them in your heart and, and then letting it out your mouth. But here we are again. I wasn't even expecting to be here. Uh, it says, my son, do not forget my law. All right. Or my word, let your heart keep my commands okay for length of days right this is a promise guys length of days and long life that is a promise as you keep the word of god in your heart and you meditate on it and let that word be seated into your heart then there's then god gives you length of days and a long life see so because everybody's like not everybody some people are like well god has a promise tomorrow are you kidding me <laughs> it's right here that he gives you length of days and a long life that is a promise for you and i and peace they will add unto you so if you need peace we need to meditate on god's word all right again these are not difficult things but simple things let mercy and truth, right? Let not mercy and truth forsake you, all right? Bind them around your neck and write them on the tablets of your heart. Again, how do you do that? Meditate. Meditate on God's promises and his word for your life. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Okay, verse five. Trust right? Faith. Trust in the Lord with all, not some of your heart, all your heart. All right. And lean not to your own understanding. Okay. So the word of God says that the man who trusts in the Lord is blessed. So if you want to be blessed in your body, we must trust in what God has to say. He said, God said that he bore himself on the cross for your sins and for your body. So we must trust in him, trust in that he has already done the work, right? Even if you don't have any evidence of healing, we talked about that in the first video. Hannah, she had no evidence when the priest proclaimed that she, right, she was barren, she she needed her uh, healing in her body in order to conceive. And when the priest declared over her, God has granted your request, then even with no evidence in her body, she went away from that meeting, believing with joy in her heart that she had her request. She had what she had asked of God. 
you can do the same. And it requires faith. It requires trust in him, right? You can never go wrong trusting in God. Trust in God more than the doctor's report. Don't let fear come in when the doctor's report comes, right? So we must put our faith in God. All right, so trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, okay? So here's the thing about leaning, guys, okay? I can't lean both ways. I can't lean this way and this way at the same time. I can only lean one way or another. I can't lean this way and that way at the same time. I can only lean one way at a time. All right. So you can't lean both on the doctor's report and on God. You have to lean and put your trust in him. Right. And then, and I've, I've said this before, we acknowledge, we're not denying that there might be symptoms or something in your body, but we acknowledge that God is greater and he has paid for that. So we don't receive that. Instead, we choose with our mouth to receive healing. And we say, by his stripes, I am healed. Okay. That is the truth. Right. Some people think, well, I'm lying. No, you're not lying. You're, you're, you're lining yourself up with what God says, right? And it says, verse six, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Okay. So in all your ways, as you acknowledge Christ and what he did, then your paths of healing will be directed. Okay. In other words, in all Whatever we acknowledge, let me, no, let me, I didn't say that right. Let me put it this way. Okay. Whatever we acknowledge with our mouth, right? We've been talking about the power of our words. That is what will direct our life. The last video we talked about James, right? The tongue is a rudder to your ship. You are the ship. What comes out your mouth will direct the direction of your ship. What you what comes out your mouth will determine your tomorrow. We talked about that in the last video. This is some of the same things. Whatever you acknowledge, in all your ways, acknowledge Christ and he shall direct your path. So the word is telling you what to acknowledge or who to acknowledge, I should say. Christ. In everything in your life, in all your ways, in all your life, you acknowledge that Christ is greater. And when you do that, that is what will be, that will, that will direct your life. Whatever you acknowledge, it will direct your life. Okay. So what am I saying? If you acknowledge sickness all the time, that's what I was doing when the doctors were trying to pronounce cancer over my life. I kept acknowledging that I'm sick. I'm sick. I'm sick. Okay. That is where my life went until I started acknowledging no, Christ has healed me. Start Until I started acknowledging that, no, I'm not going to acknowledge the doctor's report. I'm going to acknowledge that by his stripes, I am healed. All right. So whatever you acknowledge in your life is going to be what directs it. Does that make sense? Okay, so I hope I, because I kind of like, yeah. Anyways, praise the Lord for that. Um, hallelujah. Okay, so let's keep reading here. Okay, we're talking about keys that unlock healing. Okay, do not be wise in your own eyes. <clears throat> Fear the Lord or trust in the Lord. Depart from evil. <laughs> yeah, that's a good thing. If you're doing evil, leave that. <laughs> leave that way behind. Um, okay, now look at this. Verse 8. If you do this, all right, if you trust in the Lord... And you acknowledge Christ, right? Acknowledge him. How? Acknowledge him as your healer. <laughs> acknowledge him as your healer. How hard is that? Christ, Lord, I just acknowledge you today as my healer. I acknowledge that, that you uh, took wounds and you spilled your blood for my body. Hallelujah. I acknowledge that surely you have borne my sicknesses and you have carried all my mental and physical pain. 
Christ, Lord, I, I acknowledge that. I acknowledge that you have promised me length of days and long life when I keep your word in my heart. Hallelujah. So look at this. It says it will be health to your flesh. Right? And all these things that we've been talking about require meditation. What, thinking on the word, right? And, and just thinking on the word of God, allowing, getting it before your eyes, letting it lodge into your heart, right? And then, uh, then the Bible says you have good success. So thinking upon it, meditating on it and letting it out our mouth. My goodness. And, um, and, and it gets better. <laughs> Do you need healing in your bones? Do you need healing from arthritis? Right? Look at this. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Glory to God. There is so much richness, guys, in the word. So many promises to meditate on. I wasn't planning on going anywhere near this today. But this is where the Holy Spirit led us today. I'm trying to get somewhere to really bring all this home. And um, I haven't been able to get there just yet. But we'll just keep reading here um, and see what where Proverbs goes. The next verse is um, honor. Honor the Lord. Right after it'll be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Then it says Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. And then after you do that, it says, so then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Hallelujah. If you want to honor the Lord today, if these teachings have blessed you, the way to have your barns filled. When we do things God's way, we get God's unlimited results because God doesn't have any limits to him. But when we try to do things our way, we get our limited results. And so if you need uh, your barns filled, if you need something filled in your life, I want to encourage you to just write Faith without works is dead. Not natural works, but works of righteousness. One of the works of righteousness is honoring the Lord with our possessions. And then what he does is he brings a filling. So much so that we, we can't even contain it. We never run out. That's the way it is in God when we, when we give. We can give and honor the Lord. When we, first of all, when we give unto the Lord at our church, at different ministries, wherever you're giving unto the Lord, first of all, you are honoring him. And what kind of a gift are you bringing unto him to honor him? Because the kind of gift, it's not about the amount that you give him, but is it attached to your heart? Because he's always looking for a gift that is attached to your heart. Because the word says where you're where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. So if your treasure is in God, then that means your heart is in God. God's not looking for uh, the size of your gift, but he's looking for your heart that's in the gift. What kind of a gift can you give the Lord today that says your heart is in that gift? And so I always want to give those that have been blessed by these teachings an opportunity to give a gift unto him. I'll put um, our link up on the screen if you would like to give to our ministry and these, these teachings have been feeding you, then you should honor the Lord in that and, and just bless him. Hallelujah. And these are principles in the word that always work. And so God doesn't need our finances, right? He's not trying to figure out how to pay the mortgage payment in heaven. But this is what he has set up on earth for you to honor him, right? And that those gifts help continue, right, to do the work 
of of him of his kingdom on earth all right and so proverbs just let us right into that we were talking about healing but let us right into that so i just want to make that invitation to you today to just honor the lord with a special gift praise the lord um and if uh, you are not a subscriber of our YouTube channel. I want to invite you to click the subscribe button if these teachings are blessing you. And I believe there's a notification button too that you click so that you'll get notified every time we post a video. Um, if you're wanting to go back to our teachings, one, two, three, four, five, I'm putting those links in the description so you can just click on them and get those teachings. Again, they're free. We love you. These are keys that unlock healing. Um, also, uh, share this video. If you know people that need healing, share all these videos, people that need healing. And I, I, I know I say this every teaching, but these teachings break it down for you in simplicity as well. This will be a great addition to these teachings that you've been listening to that will really solidify in your heart, um, healing. And these are the, <clears throat> this book especially is the how to's to walk out your healing and it will bless you. I mean, it was written under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And then we've got nine audio teachings as well that go with the book. This is called our healing pack. So we'll put um, up on the screen how to get these. Uh, I just want to re recommend that you do that. Uh, and it's just healing, understanding of healing and really having it lodged in our hearts is just not an option anymore we need we we ought not to be sick <laughs> we are the body of christ we should be the healthiest people on the planet right but instead we're seeing the opposite not not everywhere but right so there's no condemnation right if you're dealing with things but but let's get healthy let's connect into divine health Amen. Because it is available to us. Did you know that I have not been since I got healed? This has got my testimony in it of how Jesus healed me off my sick bed over 20 years ago. And I have not been back to the doctor since. <laughs> there is divine health. I'm not saying that symptoms don't try to get on my body, but I know what to do when they try. And so these teachings will keep you out of the doctor's office and out of the hospital. So get them. They will help you. I love you so much. Subscribe, share, send us your prayer request. God bless.